So there are a bunch of different note-taking applications available online, whether it's self-hosted or third-party or whatever the case is, and I'm always on the search for something different, something new to take a look at. Now, part of that reason could be that I am very scatterbrained and very all over the place, and I'm leaving myself notes everywhere, whether it's in note, like in, in Notepad or in Gmail or on my desk or whatever, I'm always leaving notes somewhere. And I think that's kind of why I have this particular affinity to checking out new note-taking applications in Docker. So the other day, uh, yesterday, I think it actually was, I was scrolling through Reddit and found a post about a new, uh, or new to me anyway, a project called Flat Notes, and that's what I want to show you in this video is this, this project and how easy it is to set up. So if we jump over to the Flat Notes GitHub repository, we can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Do me a favor, uh, I would actually really appreciate this on behalf of the developer anyway. If you find this particular project helpful, useful, interesting, whatever, do me a favor and go over there and uh, give the, the, the project a star, maybe follow it, uh, just to kind of show some appreciation for the project and, and their development team. So everything here, uh, you can look through all of the different uh, files and folders and all of that kind of stuff. We can see that this was updated just within the last couple of days. This was updated yesterday, so it's still very much in active development. I will have links to all of this in the description down below if you wanna check all of this information out. So coming back over here to the GitHub repository, we can take a look through all of the different files that are here. We can get an idea of what's going on in the about section. If you click the flatnotes.io, it just takes you back to this page. So maybe there's something in the works for that coming down the pipeline that I'm not aware of just yet. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit further, uh, there is a readme down here that we can take a look at. And right there, it says log into the demo site and take a look around. So let's actually do that real quick so you can kind of see what's going on here. So we're gonna click that. I wish that opened in a new link or a new tab, but eh, whatever. So anyway, here we are, we're on, this is it. This is logged in. There's, there's no author or no, no authentication set up on this one. And that is an option we'll talk about here in a little bit, but this one is, it's just this. And right here you can, right there is their, their little logo, flat notes, search. You can take a look at a recently uh, published notes that are here. Uh, we can take a look at this other one that also has, you know, headings, more, more information and more, more styling. That's the word I'm looking for for more styling available. So you can kind of get an idea of what all of this looks like. There's code blocks, um, there's tables, there's all kinds of good stuff in here. There are actually a couple of different ways to edit uh, a note in here that we'll take a look at. If we come up to the top, we can click edit here or just hit E on our keyboard. I love the little pop-ups that give tips and tricks along the way. Really, really well done in that regard. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that's coming from somebody who was a web, dev a web developer for a number of years. The little touches mean all the difference in my opinion, especially when we're, we're talking about a new project um, and trying to get people familiar with how to use it. Having these little touches, love it. So let's actually create a new note right up here. We click new, uh, we'll give this a, a, a title, we'll call this video demo. And then we've got some different options, right? By default, it is set in Markdown. If we come down here to the bottom, we can see that Markdown is there. Um, you know, if you want to, you can do, um, you know, you can you can just write all of this stuff out Actually, I screwed that up. That needs to be like that. But if you're like me and you're not great with Markdown and you'd rather use a WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get editor, uh, right down here next to the Markdown tab, you can click that and right there is your WYSIWYG editor. And it's super, super easy uh, to, to use. Obviously, uh, hi, this, is, wow, if I could type, is a new note, right? And then you can come over here and click save. And right there, there is your note. And from here, you can edit it, you can delete it. Uh, if we come back to the homepage, uh, right there is our video demo. And this is how the site operates. There aren't any pages, there's no categories, there's none of that kind of stuff. But what makes this uh, better, in my opinion, is the search functionality behind it. You know, you can, I don't know if there's anything lorem ipsum related there, but there's a markdown test. I figured there was probably some lorem ipsum in there somewhere. Uh, you know, you can type in all kinds of different stuff here and and from there just see just that quickly how, how fast it responded with that search feature. And I absolutely love that. So you don't have to spend a lot of time talking about or, or, or dealing with categorization and tags and all of that kind of stuff because the search feature on this is so, so good. 
Um, and of course, if you if you decide I don't want that note, you can click delete and uh, and click delete and it's gone just that quickly and easily. Of course, a couple of other things that we can do here. Uh, the first one is we can click toggle theme and that'll take us to white mode that makes my eyes hurt. So I'm gonna click it off. Uh, you can also list all of your notes sorted by default uh, A to Z, or you can uh, sort by score, which I, I'm not entirely sure what that's for. Um, but it's there. You can also look at last modified, so basically uh, newest to oldest um, and that sort of thing. So there, there are some different ways that you can see all of your notes in a list or you can search for them again with this really cool search functionality that's been built into this. Um, of course, up here, you can also, you know, you can click there or uh, you can hit the, uh, you know, the, 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 the forward, the forward slash, I think, on your keyboard, no matter where you are, and it should take you to this search function. So, that that's it right the, and of course there was no login on this but i'll show you how to add a login when we get this deployed so if we come over and we take a look um let's man let's let's come back over to here let's go to flat notes the github repository so that we can kind of scroll down here and take a look um, at these docker there's a, a docker run command there's also a docker compose command. Uh, I love how, how how this has been put together. I really appreciate the effort that's gone into this uh, to this project. With version three Docker Compose, our service is flat notes. Our container name is flat notes. A lot of people don't bother to put uh, a container name in. I appreciate that it's there. Sometimes having a container name defined makes searching for logs and things like that much, much easier when you're doing stuff in command line. So I appreciate that. Uh, the image is dullage slash flat notes latest. Our environment variables, PUID and PGID, uh, based Basically, uh, those you would swap out with with whatever your uh, UID and and, and uh, GID are for your setup. But um, it just defaults to 1,000. Uh, if you're not sure how to get that, there are lots of resources online to show how to find your PUID and PGID. Next, we've got an auth type. There are three different auth, auth types or authentication types. By default, it's set to password. You also got an option for none, which would just leave everything open with no password protection. There's also a TOTP. So if you've got like one of those uh, authenticators on your phone, that you know you put in your username and your password and it's like hey what are the six what are what is your what is your additional password your two-factor authentication you can put that in as well um, and I'll show that I've got a demo of that uh, uh, docker compose available that I'll show here in a minute uh, we've also got a username and password obviously change all of this uh, and a flat note secret key that's just part of the encryption process um, so that's all of the environment variables. Below that, we've got a volume. Uh, we've actually got two volumes available, one of them optional. The first one is just where do you want your, your markdown files to be stored or your, your note files, basically. And then there's also one for um, for the search function. Maybe you want to put that somewhere else. Maybe you've got a, a large installation and you'd like your notes and your search to be separate so that they don't you know interfere with each other, that sort of thing. You can put your, your uh, search function in a different place or the search index, I should I should say that correctly, the search index in a different location, as it says here. The ports uh, by default are 8080 on both sides of that colon, but if you're using port 8080 on something else, you can change the first half of that, uh, that line there. Uh, just don't ever change the second half, anything after the colon. And then the restart less stopped, uh, fairly standard. You could say it always or never or or whatever the case is, but you've got a restart policy there. All of this looks really, really good. However, uh, I had to modify it just a little bit for my own setup, and I wanna show you that next. Uh, we're gonna come over here to right there. This is over on my Len Paste instance. I wish my mouse would quit doing whatever it's doing there. Anyway, so all the same stuff except for these two lines right here changed. Uh, I added some additional notes there, but I set mine to TOTP. And then we've got uh, just a flat notes TOTP key. Uh, basically that's just gonna be a random 32 string or 32 character string. Um, and, and basically, and I'll show you how that works once we get this deployed. Uh, we've got our username, our password, another uh, secret down here. We talked about that one already. Everything else in here is the same. So what I'm gonna do is just click copy. And again, this will be linked in the description down below if you wanna use this version instead of the default version, completely up to you. Then I'm gonna jump over here to Proxmox. I'm gonna start uh, this flat notes video container. I'll give this just a second. Jump over to the console. We're gonna get logged in. There we go. So the first thing I wanna do is create a Docker Compose for this so that I can deploy it uh, via that Docker Compose method. So, oops, I'm gonna nano. Well, 
And then I'm just gonna paste this in here just like it is. Uh, I don't need to change anything here for the sake of this demonstration. But again, uh, if, you, if you decide you don't want to use the TOTP, the two-factor authentication method, you can get rid of this line entirely and then just switch this to you know either password or none, depending on what your comfort level is with access to this. Uh, however, I do want uh, the TOTP there as a demonstration. So all of this, I'm happy with all of this. I'm gonna do control O and enter and control X to save and exit that docker compose.yml file. And then I'll do docker compose up dash D. Oops. Now you, you, you saw me put that dash in there, I'm sure right there, oops, like that. Uh, if you run this and it's like, hey, we don't recognize this, go back up. Um, and just do that with the dash and then hit enter. Uh, and that should work. It depends on which version of Docker Compose you have installed on your system here. So we're gonna give this a second to do its thing. And then we're gonna take a look at the Docker Compose logs. Or the not, no. Then we're gonna take a look at the, the, the Docker, com yeah, the Docker logs, the container logs, the container logs. So give this just a second here. Okay, so here we are just a couple of seconds later and everything appears to be up and running. So I'm gonna do uh, Docker space PS and everything is up and working, so that's good. I'm gonna do IPA, just so I get the IP address of this. I'm going to copy and paste. That's fine, continue. All right, so now I can't log in because I've got a username and a password, but I don't have my 2FA code. Here's how we're gonna find that. We're gonna come back over, oops, nope. We're gonna come back over to our console here and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clear my screen first. I think that's gonna be the easiest thing. And then I'm gonna do uh, docker logs uh, flat notes. And right there, right there is the QR code that you'll scan with your two-factor authentication uh, app. So I'm gonna do that real quickly here. And don't worry, none of this is gonna be available by the time you see it. So I'm not super concerned about whether or not you see this. I'm gonna add a new account, scan a QR code. Oops, it's back out. Uh, I'm gonna uh, that and save that. There we go. Now I've got that. So I can put in my username and my password. And, oops. And log in. And just like that, we're logged in, we're ready to go. Now we can save our password if we want, or, you know, we can click new and uh, a new video note. And then come over to here, I wanna use, and then we'll click save. And there it is just that fast. Now, what's really cool about the way Flatnotes is built, it's super, super easy to get this set up on a reverse proxy. Now you may you may use Nginx Proxy Manager or Traffic or Caddy, any of them that are out there. I mean, there's so, so many different reverse proxies or different ways to access your, your different containers remotely. I still am a big fan of Cloudflare tunnels. So I'm gonna do that real quick here. I'm gonna jump over here to Cloudflare. I'm going to create a new tunnel. I don't care if you see any of this. This is just my test account. I'm going to call this uh, flat notes video, like so. I'm going to click save tunnel. And of course, I'm already logged into Cloudflare. I'm already set up on uh, their zero trust here. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, I've already made a video about that that I will link in the description as well. So you can check that out. Um, you could do this in a Docker container. However, I prefer to do it uh, this way using uh, the Debian method because all of my containers are set up on Debian. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna come back over to here. I'm gonna paste this in. I'm gonna hit enter. Here in just a moment, really just quickly here, it's gonna say, hey, we're done, just like that. So I'm gonna come over to here. I'm gonna scroll down. Hey, look, there's, we're already connected, right? I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna call this uh, flat video dot. Uh, dbtech.dev, um, I'm going to put in HTTPS. Um, I'm gonna grab that IP address. I know I can use the container name. I could just put in flat notes right there, but you know, I like to do things my way. You can put in however you'd like to do this. Um, next, I'm just gonna scroll down. I'm gonna click save tunnel and then flat notes video right there. Uh, I'm gonna come over here to configure and then I'm gonna come over to public host name because I'm lazy and this is easier. And there it is. Now, now we're on a domain name. We've got our, our SSL secured. We're on our, our you know, flatvideo.dbtech.dev. And there is our login screen just that quickly and easily. We've deployed our new uh, note-taking application in Docker uh, with just a, just a few minutes of our time. And we're already set up on a domain name. So again, if you find this video interesting, you like this project, do me a favor, go over to the GitHub repository and uh, give this project a star. I think currently we're at like 311. 
stars on this, I'd love to see that number go way, way up. Um, also, if you know of any other projects like this, maybe you're a developer and you're working on your own project and would like me to feature it, do me a favor, send me an email. All my contact information is available over on the about page of my YouTube channel. Uh, shoot me an email, let me know what your project is, what the links are so I can check it out. Would love to start featuring uh, more projects like this here on the channel. But I think with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.